to Talk Africa with me, Joan. Uh, Talk Africa is a program that brings you closer to home by discussing all issues pertaining to Africa. And my guest in the studio today, we have Ludwig Nee Jr., who's a host of Entertainment Zone here um, at GM Radio. Um, my second guest is Peter Sam. Peter Sam is a culture enthusiast. And today, um, we're going to learn a lot from Peter this morning. <laughs> As always, the first part of today's show, we will review stories making the headlines here in the UK. And then the second part of the show, we will turn our attention uh, to the continent of Africa. We will review stories making the headlines across the continent. And then finally, we'll move on to our topic of the day. And it's a very interesting one today. Uh, today's topic is, um, are we losing our identity as Africans? It's a very big topic, a really, really big topic. And I know that my guest are ready to buy into this issue <laughs> this morning. As always, if you want to get involved with the conversation, what you need to do is call us 0203-735-8820 or 0203-286-0185. You can also send us a text on 0793-286-1328 if you want to go on our Facebook page because we are streaming live on Facebook, okay? It's GNTV UK Facebook. Leave your comments there. Let's start. Uh, Ludwig, let me start with you. Morning. Yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. How are you? I didn't even... I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and you, Peter, sir? Are you okay? I'm just fine. That's good. That's good. That's good. It's very cold, but we're okay. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. Yeah, we'll good fine. Stuff. Fine. Yeah. Good fine. stuff. Good stuff. So, Ludwig, uh, what story um, has caught your eye this morning? Yeah, I think um, it's probably something that's caught everyone's eye for a long time. Uh, not necessarily the story, but the person who's making the story. Um, Mr. Boris Johnson, uh, right. our very own foreign secretary. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, whenever you say Boris, you know it's not exactly going to be something um, that you can't laugh about. But once again, Boris has made a blunder. Yeah. Um, there's a lady called uh, Nazanin Zachary Ratcliffe, Ratcliffe who yes. has been held, you know, in, in Iran for um, espionage charges. And what Boris has said, I mean, let me read the article. This is um, The Sun, page 8, and the uh, uh, title is Boris Rongson. Minister owns up to gaff over Marmajod in Iran. So, <laughs> Boris Johnson admits he blundered over um, a Marmajod in Iran and apologized yesterday. The Foreign Secretary told the, uh, the Commons he could have been clearer. Hmm, Boris. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't miss his well, words. When, when have you not been clear? Um, <laughs> so, um, he says um, he was wrong in suggesting that the Brits had been training a journalist in Tehran when she was actually on holiday. And, you know, she's been held in, in Iran for espionage charges. What the Iranians are saying is what Boris has said. Yeah. And obviously, he's a foreign secretary. You know, people are looking for you for help, for guidance. Normally, so, he's the person to go to. He's the person to, to go to. you. Yes. So he made the blunder. Then he said, well, actually, sorry, um, I was wrong. <laughs> then he said he's called um, the Iranians' um, uh, foreign ministers and, and ex explained to them that actually the lady was on holiday. And quite interestingly, um, of course, I am sorry if any of my words have been so misconstrued as to cause any kind of anxiety to the um, Ratcliffe family. He revealed he also phoned the Iranian foreign minister to plead for a, re a release, and he will go to the Middle East later in the year to go and uh, plead for a release. So, <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know <laughs> what people make of that, but this is typical Boris. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Redefine. Wondering what's going on in the life of your favorite entertainment personality? Wonder no more because the Daily Sepit has got you covered with the latest in entertainment news, gossip, fact, rumors, and of course, some sizzling interviews. Not just that, did you know? Actor Jimmy Fox's real name is Eric Malone Bishop. I bet you did you know. On the Did You Know segment, we bring you some mind boggling fight you might not know about your favorite celebrity. We don't only set the trend with our stories, we bring you trending videos and images that have gone viral on social media. Your entertainment just got better. Thank you. 
Um, just want to uh, just quickly apologize that we had some few technical issues, but we've been able to resolve, uh, resolve those issues. Um, I think there was a bit of an issue with the sound, but we've been able to rectify it now. Um, just before we went off, uh, Peter, I was coming to you. Mm -hmm. What story um, have caught your eye? Uh, the story that has caught my eye is the, uh, the Preeti Patel uh, story, which headlines, Patel faces the sack over secret. Israel trip. Yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes. And conservatives, huh? Yeah, conservatives. Yeah. And uh, you know, if one is, can recall that uh, Mr. Fallon, Michael Fallon, yeah. himself got himself into trouble <laughs> <laughs> uh, over over <laughs> touching of the knee. Yes, Alleg touching of the yeah. knee. Yeah. 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 You know, this also put pressure on on, on our prime minister. But then that said, um, diplomacy has always been diplomacy. And whether it's in the front door or the back door, if you will, you know, uh, people had to talk. But what did she do? I, I mean, I think I think I find it quite interesting that you know some of of her, of of her, of her stature was able to meet another country's prime minister, and then thinking about with if that, with you know, the we've had the knowledge of, of our, our PM minister. here, yes. you know, Theresa May. Yeah, yeah, Theresa May. Yes, but then here here we are, you know. She just didn't go there by herself. That's mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. She was supported by somebody who had uh, a Tory influence mm -hmm. and business contacts mm -hmm. in Israel. Yeah, you know. So definitely, she might have thought, "Okay, I've got a backing of such a person, and therefore I can do it." Without but, also, but also, in terms of even giving, trying to give money to Israel, who are in the Golan Heights, which is an area that's not recognized for Israel to be in, and she's someone who's meant to be in charge of giving aid. All of that doesn't make sense, you know. Well, it, it doesn't make sense, but but nothing ever in politics makes sense to us, <laughs> except to them, because you know, for instance, uh, they would tell you we're not selling arms to Israel because mm -hmm. of their policies, you know, towards the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they do behind the back door, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Israel buy from 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 Britain, and Britain buys from Israel. Mm -hmm. So nothing is ever is ever certain. Nothing is ever concrete in politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it all depends on on, on what's going on in, in any given moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So hair going is not something new. It's just, it's, 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 it's just been done all of the, the only thing is that she's been found out. No, is, is it not undermining Theresa May's leadership? No, it is not. Well, I, I, I think so, because, I mean, if Theresa May is not aware of it until last Friday, and, you know, if anything, I would imagine Theresa May would have given the OK yeah. for um, um, Priti Patel, I believe her, her name is, to go yes. and meet. You know, this is another country's head of state. So, yeah. you know, you don't just yeah. go and meet them. It's, it's, so I think the people it's behind the, the scenes, code. the it's people... It's the ministerial code. And I think both her and especially Boris Johnson, for his comments, <laughs> in, uh, uh, under normal circumstances, he would have resigned. And it's quite interesting that all this stuff he does, he's still not resigned. And, uh, no, no, hold on. I, I get you. Officially, officially one could say that. Yeah. But then unofficially, this has been done so many times. Even during the Nixon administration, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he, his uh, uh, chief of staff had to go behind him to see the Russians regarding Vietnam and, mm -hmm. and all. So this has always been done. You know, it's only when it is found out that it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Because finally, May would have been told about it that this is what has been done. Mm -hmm. But the only problem was that it was done without her, her, her prior knowledge and that is the problem you know i mean to say that this has not been done ever would be wrong it's always been done under the carpet if mm -hmm. you will you know except that this time she was found, found out, out. Okay. Okay. you know mm -hmm. uh, Ludwig, um what, what other story have you got I, I picked up it's quite interesting um children under the age of 14 by the age of 14 are sending 65,000 messages okay so they're spending roughly about two hours and i think two hours and 15 minutes a day on their phones Children under the age of 14. Yeah, so by the age of 14, they're spending two hours and 15 minutes on their phone sending messages. And this is the, has been a server that came out. And so the youngsters typically, typically uh, got their first phone, mobile phone, at 10. They devoted like more than an hour a day to browsing the likes of Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, 
Addiction to their phones was like the most common argument with their moms and dads. And the study for kids' um, smartphone makers, Mongi found out. So psychologist um, Becky Spellman urged parents, it's your job to help them navigate their digital waters safely and set boundaries. So this is something that, I mean, when you think about it, two hours, two and a half hours a week, um, I mean, a day, we're looking at, you know, over 10 hours a week. You know, I mean, if you were studying something... Is it, is it that bad, considering the amount of time children spend watching TV? I think if, they are t if the, the TV is when you are at home. Right. So now you've got a phone, you take it outside of the home, you have your two and a half hours or two hours and 15 minutes on the phone, and then you come and watch the TV with the phone. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? So I think... Um, and, and I guess it's quite interesting, the topic that we're talking about today and how things have changed, yes. you know, because um, people give their children mobile phones and tablets as a way of, you know... It's, it's, it's a new generation. It's a new generation. It's a new generation thing. You know, but I think the, the dangers are the fact that, you know, for two and a half hours, I guess, if you have a, a, a child that you, you need to keep occupied, that's great for you as the parent, but this, the consequences of that is... Children get used to phones so much that they don't know how to concentrate when they don't have those. those if, if, it's funny you, you brought this story up. A few days ago, it was reported that um, children under the, the age of 10, have been, um, what was it called? Sexting. They've been sexting. Yes. So then the, <laughs> what, what happens is if they're spending that much of that amount of time using their phones, what exactly are, are they, they doing, doing on what that? What kind of messages are they sending? You know, and also remember, we're, they, we've exposed them to a different type of 24-hour world, where now, whereas before, you know, we have watershed, you know, you can't watch anything that's, you know, of, of adult nature yeah. before 9 o'clock. They have that now. They take that to school, you know. They've got VPN. They've got browsing status. They go to places where they've got access to Wi-Fi. You don't know what they're doing on there. And, and it also means that maybe we're giving them um, an opportunity to grow up too quickly because they are now used to things that you never know. They've got codes. They, 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 we, we, uh, if you're a parent, you are caught in the dark. Be, 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 yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, but so this is where I come in. Yeah. I, I've raised two kids. Yes. You know, so I'm aware of this problem. Mm. Yeah. And this is where I go back to my cultural upbringing. Yes. And I tell him, me I speak in fancy so that I can translate later. Okay. Mm. That's a akoko tsienba in sunkumun. Okay. Right? A hen may step on its cheeks, but it will never kill it. That no matter how much you love your your children, there must be some form of discipline mm -hmm. that comes with it and balances the whole love discipline thing. Mm -hmm. So even though I bought my, my teenage son uh, a mobile phone, mm -hmm. he, he never takes it except he, when he wants to use it. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, if he said, Dad, we're traveling over to this place and we'll be back at school at this time. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, you take it. And as soon as you get to school, call me so that I can come and pick you up. Mm -hmm. So he gets to use his phone only on the weekends mm -hmm. for a certain number of, 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 uh, of, of, of minutes or hours. And that's it. Because I know that given to, that opportunity, mm -hmm. they would misuse it. I think I think your your, your son is, is is probably one of the few that maybe follow the rules. But there are other people who are not necessarily of certain generation or certain mindset. So they will probably just trust their children with it. So I mean, whereas we've got your example where it's working well, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. But in the areas of it where it's not working so great, in 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 an areas where maybe you know the people you know you've got teenage parents who never had the upbringing themselves of having discipline who are now having children who are now giving their children mobile phones then you can see where the spiral begins to kind of unravel and then before, you can see the problem before we go on the break yeah. let me ask you are you um phone savvy yes you are yeah i am okay so you know about the the, the, the social media the instagram the snapchat the, the dms the DMs. All, all the dms i know everything and okay. i know I, I mean i've seen my boy use it yeah right he uses this you know he comes to me sometimes and says that this is this is what i found or, or that I, so i know but i tell him i said look it's yours to use a, a time will come where when you are 18 that I can't control you. You can yeah. do whatever you mm -hmm. want. A time has come, um, P, uh, I have mm -hmm. to control you and go for a quick break. Mm -hmm. We're taking a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with our discussion. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.
majority of you only pay attention to us after years of unremitting persistence and rejections, whilst we challenge the way it has always been done. We have made courageous decisions many of you wouldn't dare dream, forgetting you can live it when you dream it. Wake up with an idea. Research the egg out of the idea. Write a massive business plan. Raise money and create business. Wave goodbye to friends and families as your life is now your business. Stick with it, even on the bad days. Following your massive expansion into a worldwide domination, retire to your favorite highland or go back to step one and wash, rinse and repeat. The CEO's Chair, showing on GNTV UK. I love social media. I mean, I am social media. So I've decided I'm going to hijack your screens for the next 60 minutes as we surf through your Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, and all of it. The key is to listen, engage, and build relationships. Social media is not just any media. It means fun and connecting to your favorite personalities online from any part of the globe. And when I say fun, I mean real fun. Effin Social. Majority of you only pay attention to us after years of unremitting persistence and rejections, whilst we challenge the way it has always been done. We have made courageous decisions many of you wouldn't dare dream, forgetting you can live it when you dream it. Wake up with an idea. Research the egg out of the idea. Write a massive business plan. Raise money and create business. Wave goodbye to friends and families as your life is now your business. Stick with it, even on the bad days. Following your massive expansion into a worldwide domination, retire to your favorite highland or go back to step one and wash, rinse and repeat. The CEO's Chair, showing on GNTV UK. Hello and welcome back to Talk Africa with me, Jones Ewa. And I'm still in the studio with Ni um, Ludwig Jr. Ni Ludwig Jr. is a host of Entertainment Zone here on GN Radio. And also Peter Sam. Peter Sam is a culture enthusiast. Um, we were doing a paper review, and I know, Peter Sam, you wanted to finish off before we move on. So if you want to carry on. Yes, I want to carry on. Um, the question I asked myself, you know, regarding these phone users or watching TVs, or all that is that. What are the parents doing? What is your duty as a parent regarding your kids? Yours is to guide them in life. They may not know they, they have the phone and they won't use it because everything is available to them. But most parents are not um, phone, phone savvy. savvy. Yeah. And kids mm -hmm. are. Yeah, so it's, it's a new thing. It's the, a new, the new thing generation. to the parents. Yeah. It's been, it, you know, so yeah, it might, I, it'd be it, difficult for parents, some yeah, parents. No, 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 no. I mean, if you were a parent, and then you're not phone savvy, then you ought to know. You ought to research and understand what you are giving your child. If my child tells me, I want, he's already got an Xbox, he mm. says, I want a new Xbox. And I said, why do you want a new Xbox for? Mm. Right. And then he was telling me why, the because reasons, of the, yeah. the, the, this, this is what it does. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is what it does. The old one does not do this one and, and, and all that. So I had to learn. And I said, okay, I will give it to you, mm -hmm. right? But guess what? I said, because you have this Xbox, mm -hmm. you're going to spend most of your time yeah. watching things rather than learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'm going to bring in a technician that will <laughs> stop you from using it until these hours. 
Okay, okay. so what, what, what do you mean a technician? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Explain yeah. that. Well, I've got a friend who knew these things. Uh -huh. And he says, oh, you can put a time this thing on it where he can't assess it okay. during this and uh, doing this. So his time limit of assessing it was about three hours. Okay. Over the weekend, let's say on Saturday, be between three and six. Mm -hmm. Right? And I said, okay, go ahead and do it. And he says, oh, you, you can use this remote to stop him from... Okay. For, for, using, what, using. for okay. using it. Okay. okay. And my okay. friend came in and did it for me. Okay. Yeah. So he goes on and he goes, Dad, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> he's okay. Right. Yeah. So I put, you know, he knew. And tell you what, he's now in university in Bournemouth University. Okay. And the last time I visited, you know what he told me? Mm -hmm. Say, thank you so much, Dad. Thank you for putting all that. Restrictions you know, and boundaries. And discipline on me. Mm -hmm. Right now, I look at myself. Even though we don't have much, mm -hmm. I'm proud to be here. Mm -hmm. than, because most of my mates look at them. But then, uh, 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 Peter, you've made it your business to know what exactly he's doing on his phone. But then we have p some parents to, who are not they, phone they, savvy. They're not phone savvy. They, they don't have the knowledge. They don't think that there are even ways of blocking. It's just not their world. Yeah. You know, so you're always going to have people who will have issues. It's like anything in life, you know. Some people will be good at it. Some people wouldn't be good mm -hmm. at it. But it's a must um, uh, uh, consumer product. So people will have it. And for those who are, don't have the issue like yourself, you are doing good. But for those who have the issue, with not being able to find technicians or not even knowing, knowing that there might be a possibility of even thinking that you yeah. can put stops to it, they will have an issue. And then the issue becomes our issue. And then we all have to deal with it. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a problem that um, even if it's a few people who have it, it's still going to have an impact on maybe they're learning, they're distracted. So for example, if we have somebody in your child's class who Maybe, you know, your child had all the boundaries, they are good, but they never had all the boundaries. They're in the same class as your child. And now it's going to cause problems because they can't concentrate in class. And oh, yes, it, it does. It yeah. does. Because, <laughs> I, because I remember my, my son bringing his friend, you know, friend in, mm -hmm. you know, and he says, oh, uh, could we, and my, I, I had my, uh, my son Percy whispering to me, <laughs> you know, you know, and 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 you, you you can see, and then he goes over to his house, mm -hmm. and then he comes that I'm allowed to do whatever. Okay. I'm allowed to do, so. <laughs> All right. Um, if you just joined us, we're just doing the paper review. What we just spoke about is uh, it's been reported that um, under 14s, isn't it, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. spending a lot of time on their phones. And a few a uh, few days ago, it was also reported that um, 10 year olds were sexting. So if you're a parent, you got a 10 year old, a 14 year old. Make sure you keep uh, your eye on their phone. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. The next segment, we're going to talk about stories that are making the headlines across the continent. And I'm going to come with, I'm going to come to you, PR. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure um, this is not the first time the Tanzanian president has made um, the, our, our news review here yeah. at DNTV <laughs> on top of Africa. Uh, Tanzanian president, John uh, Magufuli, yeah. what is he up to now? Well, uh, we heard well over the uh, televisions and the radios that uh, he served some officials, you know, for not remembering their budgets. He's a really no nonsense man, isn't he? And that's uh, and that should be it. That should be it for me, person. That should be it. Let me give you an example. You know, about four weeks ago, the U.S. Uh, destroyers were in collision with some ships. Well, the mm -hmm. captain was not on at the helm. Of navigation, yeah, and yet when they did inquiries as to what happened, uh, the chief of Nav uh, 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 navy was crying. Says, "I don't care what happened. You, you, the head, was supposed to be there." So both captains of the ships were immediately sacked. I mean, if you had a department and you don't know how much budget mm -hmm. is under your this, then, then I'm sorry. Something is missing somewhere else. Has has must row. Yeah, has must row because you must know exactly how much money you have and where you're going to use it, how you're going to use it, and then what is going to come out of it. Accountability, so, isn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Accountability. I mean, as soon as your listen says, "Oh, okay, I have this this uh, amount of uh, amount of money. Mm -hmm. This is where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. This is what will, will come out of it." Oh, maybe there and there and there about, you know. So for you to tell, I don't know how much. Come on. <laughs> but but um, since Magafuli took charge, it's been two years now. Yeah. And um, in April, 
he sacked around 10,000 civil servants for having fake education certificates. Yes. Okay. Um, when he came on the scene, a lot of people were saying, look, this is the type of leader that Africa needs. Mm -hmm. But recently, we've also found out that he, um, he's you know, kind of put restriction against opposition. So if the opposition party trying to hold rallies, he stops it. So are we then looking for, looking at somebody who came with good intentions and in the end <laughs> become a, di a dictator? dictator? Well, uh, uh, let's take, for instance, our own Kwame Nkrumah, all right? Everybody would, 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 would agree with me that Nkrumah had good intentions towards his nation, the way he wanted to develop Ghana, the way he wanted Africa to unite. Yeah. And he was developing Ghana at such a pace, right? But it came to a point where he said, okay, I'm going to have a one-party state. Change our own national flag mm -hmm. to the CCP, CCP. And people were like, what's he on about? The powers go to their head then. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so no, no, because <laughs> no, no, because you, you ask yourself, how do I make sure that I can get things done without getting opposition really, you know, bury me all the time because if you look at it right what is democracy but uh, shouldn't that shouldn't that also be that if you are doing something that's really good then the opposition will see what you're doing and you no, can no, justify no, 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 that if you're doing something which is contrary to the constitution mm -hmm. it's up to them to bring it to the forefront yeah th that's true yeah but then here you are you know how do we define democracy in terms of, of our Africanness? Right? Because, as Rollins would say, they said, we are not socialists. Neither are we capitalists. Mm -hmm. Neither are we communists. We are communal. Yeah. That once a leader has decided something, all of us should come together and support that leader in doing whatever he is doing. At some point, that probably used to be true, but not it, anymore. It, yeah, <laughs> it is true at some point. But here we are. So... We Africans ourselves can can really define what to, uh, sort of political structure we have. You know, we've imported others, and we're trying to make a go at it. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem, that when we hit a barrier, instead of understanding the opposition is there just to help us steer, as as it were, the shape of the of the nation, we go back to ourselves, the old selves, where somebody says, "Oh, I'm a benevolent dictator." benevolent quote unquote yeah right and therefore i can do what i'm doing what i'm doing for the good of the state people yes and this is it so we know that there's the democracy we know that there's opposition we know that they are there to 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 to, to guide us yeah and in a way support us or oppose us mm -hmm. if things are not right but we always go back to those real african thing and says oh i'm a benevolent dictator okay yeah. all right ludic I've got, I've got a story here that talks about um, another way of trying to detect malaria. So uh, malaria breath test shows promise. So they're saying people who um, has malaria has a distinctive breath print. So they have a, a machine. It's a bit like a, a, breath a breathalyzer over here. Yeah. So, you know, if you drink too much and, and you, you know, it, it gives off a, a certain um, figures or certain signs. So they're saying that um, people with malaria give off distinctive breath prints that could be used as a test for the disease, according to um, American scientists. They have already tried out a crude prototype breathalyzer in Africa, a tropical medicine conference heard. The test was reasonably good at detecting cases in children, but needs developing to um, become a routine device. One of the odors it sniffs out is identical to a natural smell that attracts insects that spread malaria. Okay. Um, so I think what they are saying is that you know we're going to have a breathalyzer type of machine which can be used, which yeah. I think would be good. Okay. Now, know, now um, before we came on air, you did touch on something about the U.S. have uh, the U.S. is it? Navy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The U.S. Navy, you know. It, what most Ghanaians don't know is that the U.S. Marines are always in Ghana, being trained by the U.S. Army. Well, AFRICOM, Africa. Maybe. Sorry? AFRICOM. Yeah, AFRICOM. Okay. Yeah, they, well, they're, they're only AFRICOM, mm -hmm. anyway. But then the U.S. Marines and go to Ghana, go to Achiasi, mm -hmm. you know, to be trained in jungle warfare. Are you, are you saying that they have a base there? Or? No, no, no. What I'm okay. saying is that uh, they, they, they identified malaria as one of the most persistent destiny in Ghana. And then they did research and they coming up well they came up with a vaccine that they, they were trying out, mm -hmm. you know, to see if it will work. And it's worked. So people are always finding ways of 
combating this this this, 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 yeah. this uh, the, I find I find I find I find the whole malaria thing quite strange, you know, because malaria, you know, is something that if you clean your houses and everyone's tidy, you can get rid of malaria. But we need to understand that we don't always need vaccines because we don't create the vaccines, and the people who create the vaccines, I know, you have, they are not going to create the vaccine to come to Africa to save you. Why are they coming to save you? You know, in when <laughs> okay. we can just sort these things out ourselves. So we need to take some responsibility yeah, for, I, I, for, for know, mosquitoes. Okay, I've always said that we should always go back to our roots mm -hmm. because. For me, you know, my grandmother would tell me, he said, be very careful if you drink beer. And I said, Grandma, why? He said, you are attract the mosquitoes. Okay. Right. You know, so it's... it's I've it's, never heard that in my life. Yes. You know, it, in a, actually, it, say, it says there is something in the beer that attracts... The insects. The, the insects to you, you gotcha. know. You know and she didn't know what it is, but then from, from this, and it says, so how do I get... Uh, so is, what is it scientifically proven? No, what, I don't know, but, 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 this is, but this is proven. Let me tell you that if you really don't have an insecticide yeah. or anything else, you don't have any money just to buy anything else, just cut the back of pineapples, right? And then, and then put them in this and put them in your room. Mm -hmm. I tell you, they, they get rid of the of all the mosquitoes. I think we need to have a show on that because um, <laughs> we, we sometimes we tend to you know when we're not feeling well, or people are not feeling well, they tend to go for the herbal medicine. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leave yeah. the prescribed medicine. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put that down as one of the main topics. Mm -hmm. But let me finish up with this um, story that I came across this morning. Mm -hmm. Unmarried couples in East African country of Burundi have until the end of the year to legalize their relationships through church or state registrations. In May, President Pierre Nkurunziza signed a new law which the government says will help protect women and create a more moral society. But some disagree. The law, according to the president, okay, is expected, and I quote, to moralize society, end quote, where he urges Burundians to show their love for each other and their country by getting married. And then live where? Live in the country, what do you mean? <laughs> no, but I mean, do you have to do, I mean, can you, I mean, imagine, you know, for somebody, maybe they, they, they have like a, a feeling that maybe I'm a man, I have a woman, you know, we're, like, we're a couple, but, you know, when I, I get married, I want them to move into my home. And you're saying, look, forget all of that, just get married, and, you know, you stay wherever you're staying. What else comes with it? Because there are people who have certain beliefs about marriage, and to force them to go and get married now, if they don't have the right the, the right a status, is, does that is that okay or is that? I, I think it ties into what we're going to discuss today because um, uh, one person was um, interviewed and apparently it's a, it's a positive traditional values. Okay. Okay. And um, a guy called Pierre, he was um, he's twenty seven year old living with his partner. Um, apparently, local officials has threatened him with a five thousand <laughs> fifty thousand <000 laughs> Rwandan francs, uh, which is twenty twenty nine dollars okay he's been he said they said they will find him uh, if any child is born out of wedlock if that happens the child will not be eligible for free education and medical costs so that's not is, bad is it <laughs> this is serious is it? they have to so if they don't get married and the child is born out of wedlock then they will not be eligible for free education I mean, in, in, in terms of like population control and like what they are saying, making sure that people have moral values, that's, that is great. But if you're saying that someone's a couple now and regardless of your circumstances, you have to get married by the end of the year, I think that is good in one sense. But in reality, what, what if we're not even getting on and we don't want to but, be there? But, but, but the thing is, it's about culture, yeah. tradition. Yes, but then this is, this is prevalent in, in, in Africa. Yeah. I mean, take for instance in Ghana or in the Fantaland where I come from. I mean, if you ever got a, a girl pregnant, you are in trouble. Because they will ask you to stay away until the girl gives birth. Gives yeah. birth. And then the, you have to pay a whole lot of mm -hmm. charges that, that, that is on, on, on you. And now, for, because of the moral and ethical distance that mm -hmm. comes with it. But here we are. If I am a young man and I'm supposed to marry a young, a young lady, how much would I have to spend? Mm -hmm. So the costings of it? The costings of it. In, mm -hmm. in, I mean, a young man looking at spending so much, and he doesn't even have a dime to his name in his savings. And yet, this natural edge, you know, is there. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. just on the man's part, on, but also on the woman's part. Well, for them to come together. So it's, it's, it's as social as it's financial, as it's 
so many other or, or, other disinfectors that come into it. So I, for you to make a law saying that okay, this is it, it wouldn't work. No, it wouldn't work because, it, like it I said, work. if you were saying that maybe you know people who have children need to make some concessions towards you know getting together to coupling up. Yes, but to say that you know if you're an unmarried couple, what 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 this thing what. What are the criteria for a couple? How does he know you are a couple? You know, do you, are they wearing like some bands or some rings or okay. are they are they got tattoos on their back? How do you distinguish who's a couple? So it's it's a it, it, I can see where he's trying to go, with it, but it, I think it just maybe probably probably trying to win some customary rights votes or something oh, with right. some election coming up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, be, because you know there are always factions in society that will support certain. Oh yes, yes of course. You know. the churches will support this All straight right. away. Um, it's Talk Africa. You're watching us um, live on Facebook. We're also on GN Radio. Okay, we're taking a quick break. When we come back, we turn our attention to our main topic of the day. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Beloved, God created man with the dust of the earth. God breathed the breath of life into mankind, so man became a living soul. It is therefore empirical to know and to understand that the earthly cannot survive without the heavenly. Faith today is designed to bring men and women of God from across the world to discuss developmental issues and current affairs backed by the scriptures and the gospels. This will enable us to have a better Ghana and a better world to live in. My name is Apostle Owahin Omaria Champon. I'm going to be your regular host. Remember, the light of God will shine. Don't miss it. You might ask an artist to explain his art, or ask a poet to explain his poem, but it defeats the purpose. The meaning is only clear through the search. Painting is the silence of thought, the music of sight. Painting is just another way of keeping a diary. If you could say it in words, there'll be no reason to paint. Redefine. Wondering what's going on in the life of your favorite entertainment personality? Wonder no more because the Daily Sepit has got you covered with the latest in entertainment news, gossip, fact, rumors, and of course, some sizzling interviews. Not just that. Did you know actor Jimmy Fox's real name is Eric Malone Bishop? I bet you did you know. On the Did You Know segment, we bring you some mind-boggling fight you might not know about your favorite celebrity. We don't only set the trend with our stories, we bring you trending videos and images that have gone viral on social media. Your entertainment just got better. To talk Africa, the program that brings you closer to home by discussing all issues pertaining to Africa. Today in the studio we have Ludwig New Jr. Ludwig is a um, entertain host of um, Entertainment Zone, isn't it? On That's GM right. Radio. That's and also right. we have mm -hmm. Peter Sam. Peter Sam is a cultural enthusiast. Um, I'm just going to take a few messages. I understand we have a few messages on Facebook. I'm going to take that and then we'll move on to our main topic of the day. Just to remind you that you can listen to us. On um, GN Radio, you can listen to us on GN Radio. DAB across London, Sky Channel 0185 across UK. Eurobed and Astro TV across Europe and also on TuneIn. GN Radio, you can listen to us. There's one comment that has come in on the Facebook page. And this is from Kofi, Kofi Ali. Kofi said, please, there is nothing like benevolent dictator. End quote. So we shouldn't use that to justify any form of dictatorship. What we have is a leadership by our laws as established in the Constitution and Acts. 
Okay, I'm trying to read all of it. Okay, we imported democracy, our own way of life are not helpful. If anyone changes the laws without going through the right process, uh, the right processes, we have to call them dictators and challenge them in defense of the constitution. So that's from Kofi Ali. I think Kofi Ali was um, talking about what you mentioned, mm. the noble dictators. But I think, I, 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 I mean, like that. yeah, I don't think you were saying people were, you were saying people were using that as a guy to do other things, as opposed to that's what they were called. I mean, you know, uh, okay. yeah, exactly what I'm, I'm, I meant with it. a dictatorship is a dictatorship. Okay. All and right. there is no, there is no way you put it, but there's no two ways about no it. Right. You're a dictator, you're yeah, a dictator, dictator. Yeah. All right. As, what, what I was trying to say is that our leaders try to justify that by you saying putting, that, yeah. yeah, putting the benevolent in front of the dictatorship. Yeah. You get to justify it. So, okay. um, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, continue to um, send in your text messages and you can call in, okay? You can call in. All right, now let's move on to our main topic of the day. Let me just read this quote. Malcolm X once said, we didn't want anybody telling us about Africa, much less calling us Africans. In hating Africa and in hating the Africans, we ended up hating ourselves without even realizing it. Because you can't hate the roots of a tree and not hate the tree. You can't hate your origin and not end up hating yourself. You can't hate Africa and not hate yourself. So that was from um, a quote from Malcolm X, which leads us into our main topic of the day. Now, one of the challenges that people of African descent continue to face from day, days of slavery is the question of identity. Okay, so we're posing a question to you out there today. Are we losing our identity as Africans? We'd like to know your thoughts. My guests are very, very eager to get into it. <laughs> Again, you can call into the studio line 0203 735 or 0203-286-0185, or you can send a text message on 0793-286-1328, or go on our Facebook page, GNTV UK, and leave your comment. Ludwig, are we losing <laughs> our identity as Africans? I think this, this, this is quite an interesting question, but it's a very broad question. Yeah. And... and I mean, yes and no. You know, some yes, some 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 yeses are for the right reasons, and some some noes are for the wrong reason. Let me give you an example of 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 some of the things that different cultures in Africans may be used to. Some different cultures are used to different practices. Some of those practices are not good. For example, FGM. FGM is not good, okay. But some people identify with it as a good thing. Okay, so I think in any society that develops, that grows, that get exposed to the world, you lose certain things and we have to try to retain certain things. But we have to identify what are the good things that we need to lose and what are the good things that we need to gain. So, for example... Uh, how, how do you determine what is good and what is but bad? That, that's what I'm, I, but that's what I'm saying. That is, that is what people will all struggle with. Because FGM, you know, everyone now, in, in the Western world anyway including Africans in the Western world, have come round to the fact that actually maybe mm, the, the thinking behind it many years ago was, was probably good then. But now as we come, come out and you know, explore the world and actually understand people's thoughts and feelings and rights and, 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 and so on, that actually, no, you can't be doing that. You can't be you know, uh, 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 putting young girls through that. You know? So uh, some of us agree. But FGM, some, let, let's yeah. just put it out there, FGM, for yeah. people that are... Yeah, female, female genital genital term mutilation. mutilation. Yes. Okay? So many people now you know, agree with that. But many people back home don't agree with that because they probably don't, are not exposed to certain things. So there are certain elements of culture that you know, we have to lose, but that is a, always going to be a struggle. But equally, there are certain elements of culture that we need to keep. And um, I think I was speaking to somebody about some of the games we play when we were, we were younger. You know, um, I went to Ikea and I saw the Owari game. You know, Owari is a game that we played in Ghana. It's nicely packaged. You can buy that from Ikea. I couldn't believe it. But you can't buy the same package from Ghana as it were. So other people have come in, they've seen something that's good, they've packaged it, they've taken it off.
for example. They hold high esteem in society. They can never do wrong. We can never do that here. You know, we need to identify that there are certain areas that we need to leave. <laughs> or identify the pitfalls and having those areas and also some, some areas that we need to maintain. L Luther, before you carry on, because I know that um, entertainment is your thing. Mm. Um, as I've been saying, you do your entertainment zone mm. here at GM Radio. Mm. And if we're looking now, one thing that is driving the youth, especially, to go back or get in touch with their roots, mm -hmm. is Afro Afrobeats. Beats. Yes. Okay. So tell us, tell us from your main experiences, you know, dealing with because um, th that type of music, which has um, broken barriers and mm -hmm. now is is coming to mainstream. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Afrobeat has 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 cemented, I guess, once again, and made sure young people want to get into their roots. People who were not necessarily even are happy to be Africans are happy walking around saying I'm African because now the music is being accepted, it's being played in the mainstream. They are, uh, you, they are seeing young people coming from Africa who are not trying to hide who they are, jumping on platforms in London, you know, O2 Arena, um, Royal Festival Hall, I believe it is, uh, that yeah, Whiskey, Whiskey, Whiskey yes. performed that. Yeah. And he sold out, and mm. this has never been done before. People are now being able to travel and rub shoulders with their, their, their so-called um, 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 role models like DJ Khalid and so on and so yeah. forth. Michael Dapa, who's mm -hmm. is a comedian, who's he's, he's done a song which you know really doesn't shouldn't really get anywhere in the scheme of things, mm -hmm. but his talent has been seen because people have embraced the culture. Whereas if this was about ten years ago, he wouldn't have got anywhere. Or so even even don't mean to cut you off. Or even um, the comedian Eddie Caddy. Eddie Caddy has a really really you know, strong from Congo. African you know? accent from Congo, mm -hmm. and and he he says Congo every time every, he comes yeah. on stage, and he he's, he's speaking Congolese, and you know he dances and everything, and he puts it out there, and mm -hmm. people are embracing that. So mm -hmm. that is taking people back home. People want to go to Africa. They want to go to Gambia. They want to go to uh, Nigeria. You know, there's and now with the advent of social media, people are now able to see the good parts of Africa as well. You know, not necessarily what the media shows us. But, you know, this is where the social media comes in with yeah, the but then, <laughs> Yeah, but then here's the thing. I mean, is, is, is really Afrobeat or rap or this thing new? It, 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 okay, so... so, so because, I say so it, because, because, because if you look at the beats of Africa, mm -hmm. like Oso Day or Osibi mm -hmm. or this thing, or rap, mm -hmm. it's always been there. But they didn't. They couldn't break through. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Yeah. So what's as, because, ourselves. Like, yeah, as ourselves. Yeah, as ourselves. Yeah, for rap like this, yeah. right? When I was growing up, I knew we call it the bibinyum, mm -hmm. tum -tum, yeah. okay. where somebody praises. We use his words to praise, right. or even at a church, if you right. go, if you want to meet at this church, somebody will get up and then rap on, and if you will, okay. and you know, quote this Bible, this and quote this Bible, the, and then that call and response, and then the congregation will respond to that. Okay. So it's always been there, mm -hmm. but as soon as rap became a thing, a cultural thing in America. The young blacks who were born in the diaspora caught on to it. Mm -hmm. So it's Africa coming back to so Afri Africa. 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 Mm -hmm. But I think the, the, distinct, the, the difference was that they were following the beats from a foreign land. So they were trying to be rappers. You know, yeah. they had American accents. Yeah, exactly. You know, they were trying to copy the L.O. Cool yeah, exactly. You know, they, they wanted to have the gold chain and the hats. Now they want to wear the African cloth. Yes. yes. They want to wear their batakari, yeah. you know, like the Nigerians sing. They, they, they don't even speak English. It's pigeon. Mm -hmm. They are singing in pigeon. You know, they are wearing their traditional clothes. They're not necessarily wearing the, um, the clothing that's identified the Western world. You know, and whereas the, the, the children in, in, and young people growing up, you know, in the Western world were identified with Western role models, they are now identifying with African role models. Mm -hmm. Let, let me come in. There's one, one artist, I tried to get him, I'll see if we can get him, A-Star. He made a song called Mother Tongue. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that um, he wished he could speak his language. Let me ask you this, Ludwig. Um, when you listen to especially the African artists, you said they, they sing or they rap in pidgin. Mm -hmm. That is a language that has come out through English. Mm -hmm. So that's not a native language. No. It's not. Okay, so now, are we saying that a generation that we meant to teach us about culture failed us? I don't think they failed us. I think what happened is that they tried to fit into a culture. So they've come from back home to fit into the Western world. So they are trying to make sure that you can fit into the Western world because they've come from a place where they're trying to survive here. So they're not going to teach you the skills 
that they didn't use to survive. So they said, if you speak good English, it's good for you. And I guess it makes sense because you are here. And I guess for most of them, they had no intentions of going back. So those who never had any intention of going back are not going to teach you skills that they don't think you are going to need. As time has evolved and people have become more confident, Africans have become more confident, you know, um, like I was saying, you know, years ago, you know, um, you, you, adults are in the room and children can't speak, you know, yeah. now you're having adults and children conversation, sharing knowledge. People are now saying, oh, well, Dad, what does that mean? Or Mom, what does that mean? Why don't you teach me that language? Because whereas years ago, you know, uh, many people have to say that they were from a different Caribbean country and otherwise being African was not, you know, cool. Cool. <laughs> now everyone wants to be African. Mm -hmm. So because everyone wants to be African, it's opened up the floodgates of, well, I want to learn more about my culture because it's accepted. And I guess if you're traveling from foreign lands to a new place, there might be some resistance as to who you are. You can fight as, as long as you, you, you can. But if people in the country you're in are not accepting you, it's going to be a challenge. Okay. But now that Africans are being accepted or feel that they're being mm. accepted, they can go furthermore and explore their language, speak their language, use their language and songs, when they wear their clothes, have African Fashion Week, and so on and so forth. And in so doing, can bring through the culture that, w that, 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 that um, we probably never had here. But in doing so, also means that now we're going to adapt other cultures that m we may not necessarily like. Yeah. You know, so we do pageant shows where um, you know, ladies are walking around bikinis, and you know, the, our older generation are like, well, what, "What's it's, this?" It's you know, foreign to us. Is it, what, mm. what do you mean you're showing ladies in skimpy wear? Yeah. We don't like that. Yeah, I know? also think I also think because because now the world is a, a, a bit more connected. Yeah, we're we traveling in global world. Like that, you know, things are coming to the fore. Because I remember very well that I was in Brixton and I was trying to call a friend, a Ghanaian friend, and you know how we call them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. And I, in the moment when I mix, he turned. Yeah. But then there was a white man there also who came up to me. Yeah. He said, are you Ghanaian? OK. And I said, yeah, yeah. So I was you, quite surprised. You, you by your culture. Yeah. 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 And I said, how did you know? Yeah. He said, because you said, S -s -s. Yeah. And I said, oh, you've been to Ghana. He said, my, wa my wife is a Ghanaian. OK. okay. Right. And then, do you know what he said? He said, mm. do you know how to prepare granola soup? OK. <laughs> OK. So because you know I missed it. Yeah. Right. So as people are traveling more and they, 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 they begin to experience, experience things, you know, they want to know the meaning of aquaba. Mm -hmm. Because I remember once, uh, this, my, my son actually says that, if, if, if you went to Ghana, he says aquaba. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Let me, I said, OK, let me speak in Fanta so that you understand. Mm -hmm. Because I could never explain that in English. Mm -hmm. He says, ekreya aba. And we don't say it to anyone except a family member. Okay. Right. I see people don't know that. Okay. But you don't say it to anyone except a, because if you told me that you're going to Kumasi, mm -hmm. for instance, you're a family member, mm -hmm. and you came back and say, oh, ekreya, aba, wamenze. So for, for somebody I don't know to come, what, 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 what does that mean? Acquire about what means it? If you, if you, you've gone if you, and come if, back, right? If you went away, mm -hmm. you've come back. Okay. Right? Because you told us that you're going away. Okay. So if you went away, you've yeah. come back. Okay. Now, sit down, we'll give you water and tell us your story. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So it was originally used for a family member. Mm -hmm. But then now it has become an acceptable thing where everyone... On the, mm -hmm. you know, so these are the things that come to the fore when... Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, just hold on your thought for yeah. a second. And we're going to say um, bye to Ludwig. Uh, we're going to lose Ludwig when we come back in the next segment. And uh, Ludwig did touch on something with regards to uh, language. Okay. I will ask, ask yourself, what is the national language in your country? We're taking a quick break. This is Talk Africa. We'll be right back. Cool, cool, cool. Guys. You might ask an artist to explain his art, or ask a poet to explain his poem, but it defeats the purpose. The meaning is only clear through the search.
Painting is the silence of thought, the music of sight. Painting is just another way of keeping a diary. If you could say it in words, there will be no reason to paint. I love social media. I mean, I am social media. So I've decided I'm going to hijack your screens for the next 60 minutes as we surf through your Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, and all of it. The key is to listen, engage, and build relationships. Social media is not just any media, it means fun and connecting to your favorite personalities online from any part of the globe. And when I say fun, I mean real fun. Effing Social Next time, not joke with Nona's family, I am it. I feel up. Foreigners are in deciding for us, I mean, what to do when it comes to our music. This is just so, so, so not cool. Charlie, Charlie, just forget them. If, if you're not ready to pay our artist like a $30,000 or $90,000, then what, where are we going? Talent get case. You go see no one kid can they stay top. You they do small acrobatics here and there, or people they clap. Why are this kid get talent? How? Instead of beefing each other, Ghanaian artists can actually join hands together and promote themselves internationally. E-news redefined. Wondering what's going on in the life of your favorite entertainment personality? Wonder no more because the Daily Setbit has got you covered with the latest in entertainment news, gossip, facts, rumors and of course, some sizzling interviews. Not just that, did you know? Actor Jimmy Fox's real name is Eric Malone Bishop. I bet you did you know. On the Did You Know segment, we bring you some mind-boggling facts you might not know about your favorite celebrity. We don't only set the trend with our stories, we bring you trending videos and images that have gone viral on social media. Your entertainment just got better. Hello and welcome back to Talk Africa with me, Jones Ewa. We say goodbye to Ludwig and we say uh, welcome to Kenneth Atto Johnson, um, another um, person who works here at GN Radio. It's getting very interesting. Okay, continue to send your comments in. The number to do so is 0203-735-8820 or 0203-286-0185. If you want to send us a test, it's 0793-286-0185. To it. In case you're just wondering, okay, um, you would like to see a bit more variety of the guests in. Yes, we did have a guest who was supposed to come in, but uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, unfortunately, he couldn't make it. All right. So now, before we went on a break, we posed this question to our listeners and viewers. And the question was Are we losing our identity as Africans? Let me read one uh, a few messages on Facebook. Uh, Amica. Uh, Kujo Wisdom is saying, I'm watching you live all the way from Ghana. Okay, uh, America, thank you. Keep watching. Uh, Blaze Edge Konke is saying, I wish I had time to listen to this very interesting topic. Okay, uh, keep your comments, keep your thoughts coming in. You can also call in. Before we went on a break, I did say something. Let me, wh wh what is the national language in Ghana? <laughs> That is arguable because one could say that if Please you... Please come closer to your mic yeah, for me. Because one could, could argue that the language spoken off on the street, but is it? Because if you went to school, then you have to use English. Yeah. You know, and English has become our, our lingua franca from kindergarten all the way to the tertiary uh, schools. So in effect, we've lost a part of ourselves. It, 
South Korea, for example, let's say, you know, developed so quickly because they use their national language in every sphere of, of activities. So one can pinpoint what language it is, it is for Ghana. Because I'm, I'm a Fante. I would say I'm proud to be a Fante, and I will speak my language. You might be a Ghana. Somebody might be listening. So we don't have a national language except the English language, which now has become our, 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 our language. Is, something, is there anything wrong with that? Or you oh, yes, it is. It is. It is. It, 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 it's a big problem. But then, ha, ha, with, with, um, with the amount of languages spoken in the, co in the country, mm -hmm. how, how does one say, okay, this is going to be the national language because we need to also bear in mind of um, tribal issues? And that's why for a long time, I think since the very inception of our, of our, of our independence, it's, it's been a problem as which national language we should use. But you can do that because everyone is proud of his own culture. Heritage. Yes, his heritage, his language. I think the Ghana's are proud of it. The Everest are proud of it. So be the Dentras or the Hunters or the Nzimas or the Dagumbas or the Kokumbas. You know. So in effect, the only language that we can use to unite us all is either Pidgin English or the proper Queen's English as it were. Yeah. You know. And but 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 then also by using that, we've lost part of ourselves. I'm listening. I'm listening. It's quite oh, yeah, you, know, <laughs> we, you know, and and, and uh, one may argue, why do we? Why do I say we've lost part of ourselves? Because it is your mother tongue that identifies you as a person. I remember very well that my grandmother called me and said, "Chrissy, we are sorry that we have to give you a name, Peter, because that is the name that you you ought to have." To be able to go to school, to the, the Roman Catholic school, yeah, yeah, to be baptized, but then your real name is Kwesi, Kwesi mm -hmm. and I asked my grandma why. He says, "Well, you are Fante, and if you are Fante, you must have a Fante name. You must have a name that is associated with your clan mm. or Ebusia." And then I asked, I asked my said, "What what does Ebusia have to do to do with it?" He says, well, you are Anana, but people may not know what it means. And then she gave me an example. He says, look, that name given to you is not for nothing. And he said, just in case you travel from Accra to Kumasi and you have no money to your name, you have nothing, not even a penny to your name or a city to your name, how are you going to survive? I said, I don't know. He said, yeah, you don't know, but we know. Because the very moment you ask, can I be shown to an Anana clan or in Asante or Yoko clan, and you go there, they will ask your mother's name. Mm -hmm. And you say, your mo my, my mother's name is Efo mm -hmm. and my mo mother's mother is Fransima. Mm -hmm. They will know you are of Anana clan, and they will take care of you. Mm -hmm. So these Ghanaian things, our language, the way we speak, the way we do things, has kept us together for a long time. That the English has come to and superimpose itself on, upon us. Mm -hmm. We have no other choice but to give you a, a, an English name. Yeah. <laughs> but then, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, with, with regards to the names, um, do, do you have an issue with it? Because uh, I mean, so um, your, your English name is Kenneth Atu, Atu Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. I don't, I don't have an issue with it, uh, but before, let me say morning to your viewers and your listeners out there, and thanks for having me on the show. Mm. Uh, I would say I wouldn't have a problem with it. I don't, I don't have a problem with it, but uh, sometimes it's how the name is being used. And uh, let's say if you go somewhere and someone asks you, oh, what's your name? And you said, okay, my name is Kenneth Johnson. Instead of you bringing your African name in within, that shows that maybe you're trying to ignore your background yeah. where you come from and sometimes even when I go somewhere and I tell people that I'm kind of they say but you're from Ghana what's your Ghanaian name yeah. and it makes me feel a bit okay my name is Atu Kwamina so uh, I think sometimes the name is very important like my a colleague is saying the name is very important but uh, um, the topic is about have we lost our identity as yes. Africans I think that I think identity have been lost from the day that uh, we ignored our ancestral background and we embraced the Western culture um, if, if, if I may put it that way, because, um, you know, the Western culture came to 
say um, make us confused from for us to divert from our language and for, for us to embrace the English language and I, I'm asking myself how many people in Ghana uh, like uncle said how many people in Ghana speaks the English or either we have to you know speak one language as a pigeon uh, to me it's very sad uh, as an African country sometimes people even find it very let's say they feel shy to yeah. even speak their own tonation or their own language and so to me I think our our identity like I said earlier on has been lost from way time immemorial that it, it takes you and I to bring these things back you you, you yeah. mentioned something yeah I'll just uh, let me just ask him this you mentioned something about um, taking up the Western culture yeah so right now across the continent across Africa mm. many people believe that if you go and see uh, the native doctor that is wrong if you believe in a certain religion, mm. that's the right religion. If mm. you're a Christian, for, for, uh, for, for a reason, mm. for an example, that's the right religion to follow. But then many people have also argued that the Christian religion was not something that Africans practiced. It was something that was imposed upon them. So therefore, have we now ditched our beliefs to, up, to uphold other people's beliefs? Let me answer that. Let me answer that. Because take, I mean, look at the, the, the monotheistic religion, like Judaism or Islam or Christianity. There's a core tenet in all of them. And by that I mean, if you look at Judaism, there's what they call Shema. And if I can quote in, 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 in the Jewish, they say Shema Israel, Adonai Lehenu, Adonai Isha. And tr in translation, they say, Hear, O Israel. Yeah. But the Lord our God is God, and the Lord our God is one. Mm -hmm. And if you ask any Jew, he knows that. Or if you take Muslim or Islam, La ilallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, there is no other God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet, peace be upon mm -hmm. him. Right? There's a core tenet. Did Ghana, or at least as I can, did we have a core tenet of belief before the white man came? Do we? Yes, we did. Yes, most people don't know. Jinyami is our core belief. Yet people did not know. Hey, explain what Jinyami is, because yes. you got a lot of um, yes. people Let from the But yes, but, but then Jinyami is just the last sentence, uh, the last words of a whole sentence. And I'm going to quote in, in Fante, mm. and then I will translate for people to understand. I say, about the Santini Efrititi. Yem will be a renew our own as I say. The yem will be also in Tanasi in Kosinevi, Jenyami. That this great panorama of creation dates back from time immemorial. No one lived, that's so is beginning, and no one will live to see its end except God. Oh, God. And this, this was the core belief of the Akan nation or the Ghanaian nation. And from it emanates so many other things, like going to see the. Yeah. It all emanates from this one thing. That is why that genuine has become a national symbol for us. Let me give you an example. If I should ask you, mm -hmm. oh, Ato, would you come to my place tomorrow? How, how will you? How will you respond? Oh, you're not many people. Oh, you're many people. But but is it by the will of God? By the will of God. Mm -hmm. But people say, yes. by the grace of God, but God, God, God's willing. Mm. Uh, no, or, or, uh, 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 or ask him, oh, Ato, I'll ask you, how are you doing? Uh, things okay. Yeah, I mean, not the moon, but the grace, but of, the God. grace mm. of God. So the I have never seen any African, or uh, let's say Ghanaian, that you've, you, you've asked, and he says, oh, you're both some letter. If it was a fetish, it, it never happens. It never happens. It's, it's God. So is this Ginyami, as I quoted, that was the core belief of the Ghanaians, spiritual. And the Christians, or the, the, the so-called Christians, or the white man was able to see supreme, because we already believed mm. that. It was already in us. That's why they were able to Christianize, yeah. quote unquote. So we have our own system that we've forgotten. And I, I will elaborate on that mm. later on. No, I, go I, on, go on. You know, so let, let's, let, let's take for instance, how would you define a, a human being or conceptualize a human being, right? 
scientifically, they will tell you it's the coming together of the XX and XY chromosome yeah. with its attendant DNA. Let me, let me just pause you for a second. Yeah. Let's, let's speak to our caller this morning. Uh, Kofi Ali, good morning. How are you? Uh, we're good, thank you. What would you like to say this morning? In fact, I feel very, very pain. Uh, very, very challenged. Morning to yourself, those uh, brown eyes and my good brother. Uh, and, uh, the name of my colleague there? Uh, Peter Sam. Peter Sam is his name. Peter Sam. Please, Mr. Peter Sam. Yes. There are challenges in what you are talking about. Yes. Uh, we are getting the meaning of culture wrongly, totally, totally. Culture is the way people do things. Right. If it's the way people do things, which then you try to uh, define identity. Right. Identity is anything, anything around a person that you can be able to say, oh, this person is that. And that identity is changing. A person may be a pagan, he's not a Christian. The culture of the person has changed. He's a Muslim, his culture has changed. So culture is changing. When you, you say your grandmother said, you go to Kumasi and visit, at the time your grandmother was talking, probably there was no social government. There's no government, there's no benefit. So you need help, that's why you go to in those days. Now, if we are able to introduce a modern way of doing things, there will be local government, there will be police station. You go to there. So we should understand, culture is not about the past. Culture is about the present, the future. Okay, Kofi, just hold no, on no, a minute. No, no, let, 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 let me. No, no, let. because I need to go for a quick break, so I need you to come in. Kofi, mm. just hold on a minute there, okay? Let Peter Sam come in quickly. Uh, Mr. Kofi, I've, I've understood exactly what you're saying. Culture is dynamic. Our, 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 our culture of yesteryears, let's say in the 19th century, late 19th century, is not what it is today. Mm. And it will keep on changing all the time. What we are trying to identify are certain core things that was before these modern times. I am not saying that, you know, you ought to be fetish or you ought to be this. I said, what was the core belief of Christianity or Islam? You know, did we, we as Ghanaians have a core belief? And I said, yes, we had a core belief. But that is thrown aside because it is changed now. We've, we've all come to accept either Christianity or Islam or whatever that you believe in now. And it's going to, going to change. I mean, take for instance, her life. I grew up with Osibi Osodi. It's gone. It's gone now. Now, now you have a new beat. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this was going to change. So, I mean, I'm not saying that we should go back to this. We are just discussing and debating, trying to find out who we are, where we've been, where we are today, and, of course, where we are going. Okay. Kofi, Kofi, come in quickly. Yes, when you say who we are, maybe you should have used the word who we were because we are going to transform each other things. And finally, uh, uh, the tribal groups you are talking about, have their languages. Above them is Ghana. So the language of Ghana is English language. Remember, the tribe did not form Ghana. Mm -hmm. Ghana, Ghana was formed by the, the, the British. Yeah. So the language of Ghana is English. That is the national language of Ghana. We should stop confusing the tribes with Ghana. The tribes are evolving. So there is a new government, a new nation now. So if we, 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 we continue to behave like the people of the past, when the present is here, I mean, we are now going into the future, then we will be killing our children. Okay, Kofi, thank you very much. When we come back, um, just make a note down, uh, mm -hmm. Peter. I'll give you enough time to uh, <laughs> answer, Kofi. Kofi, just for time reasons, we have to leave it here. Thank you for calling in. We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue the discussion. It's Talk Africa. We'll be I, right I don't think back. he's getting the debate. Beloved, God created man with the dust of the earth. God breathed the breath of life into mankind. So man became a living soul. 
it is therefore empirical to know and to understand that the earthly cannot survive without the heavenly. Faith today is designed to bring men and women of God from across the world to discuss developmental issues and current affairs backed by the scriptures and the gospels. This will enable us to have a better Ghana and a better world to live in. My name is Apostle Owahin Omaria Champon. I'm going to be your regular host. Remember, the light of God will shine. Don't miss it. News redefine. Wondering what's going on in the life of your favorite entertainment personality? Wonder no more because the Daily Setbit has got you covered with the latest in entertainment news, gossip, fact, rumors, and of course, some sizzling interviews. Not just that. Did you know actor Jimmy Fox's real name is Eric Malone Bishop? I bet you did you know. On the Did You Know segment, we bring you some mind-boggling facts you might not know about your favorite celebrity. We don't only set the trend with our stories, we bring you trending videos and images that have gone viral on social media. Your entertainment just got better. Majority of you only pay attention to us after years of unremitting persistence and rejections, whilst we challenge the way it has always been done. We have made courageous decisions many of you wouldn't dare dream, forgetting you can live it when you dream it. Wake up with an idea. Research the egg out of the idea. Write a massive business plan. Raise money and create business. Wave goodbye to friends and families as your life is now your business. Stick with it, even on the bad days. Following your massive expansion into a worldwide domination, retire to your favorite highland or go back to step one and wash, rinse and repeat. The CEO's Chair, showing on GNTV UK. Hello and welcome back to Talk Africa um, on GN TV, also on GN Radio. In the studio with me today we have Kenneth Atu Johnson and also Peter Sam. Peter Sam is, a, is an enthusiast, cultural enthusiast and also Atu Johnson works at GN Radio. He does a morning show here and also does a lot of variety shows, okay? That's why we've got him here this morning. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go into I mean, coffee, before we went on the break, coffee came on. Just in case you just tune in, okay, the topic we're discussing this morning is, um, is a very interesting um, question we're posing to our listeners and viewers this morning. We're asking, are we losing our identity as Africans? We've touched on um, language, the influence of languages. How come in uh, certain countries across the continent, the national language is a foreign one? Okay, we're asking that question. But you wanted to just say something briefly about what Kofi said when before he went. We went yes, on the I mean I, I understand Kofi, but this is the question. This is the question I posed to him. Yes, we all know that that English is the is the, is the lingua franca of Ghana. Mm. The question I ask him in return is that what do we do with, with with the language of the various tribes, right? Do we do we do, do we do we hide it? Do we do we do we develop it? Do we, what do we do? Mm. As a fancy, I would, I, would, I would want to speak my language, and I'm and proud of it. Comfortable, it, it, it yeah. Yeah, comfortable there, because if I go to my elders, that's what I'm going to. I remember mm. going back to Ghana, and you know, there was a meeting waiting for me. Also, Kwesi, Abu, Denyamiase. I have to answer in fancy. In fancy, not you in know, English. You know, don't talk much in English. Mm. You know, even though I'm domiciled here and I speak English, listen, I have to, I have to respond in. Mm. in, in what do we do with, 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 with it? I'm, I, I'm not saying that, you know, we should do away with the language that has united the whole of Ghana. I mean, we've used it since prior to independence mm. and after independence. What I'm, what I'm saying is this. All the tribes also have their own languages that we need to develop. But then what Kofi, I think what Kofi was trying to get at is the fact that, you know, times have changed. Things mm. have moved on now. Mm. Why are we still holding on to the past? No, we're not holding on to the past. 
What past? Is, is your language your past, your present, or your future? I'm talking about the grand language. I'm talking about the... the uh, even as I speak now, previously, one of the languages used on all the, the, the media or the multimedia in Ghana was English. But that is changing. The radio talk shows in Ghana or TVs are mm. using our own language, language so that our mothers, excuse me to say, who are, who are illiterate, quote unquote, can also partake in the debate. Mm. So we, as I speak, we are even going back to our own roots. Ghana is changing. No more English. I mean, mm. it's where that if you're not dedicated, you couldn't partake. Listen, it's gone now. Politics, entertainment, social, listen, all we are going back to our, uh, the same roots mm. where we are using our language. This is it. You know. Okay, um, you can call into the studio right now. I promise you, you will get through. The number to call is 0203 or 0203 If you want to send a text message, it's 0793 Also, we're streaming live on Facebook. Go, to, go on our Facebook page right now, GNTV UK. You can watch us live from there. And also, you can leave a message. I'll do my best to read it out. Um, before we take a few messages, let me ask you, um, Atul, mm. you mentioned something about uh, religion, yeah. um, how it was imposed upon Africans. Africans, yeah. Okay. Now, if we look across Africa, it has been taken up. And I think I said it earlier, but I don't think you quite answered what I was, you got what I was trying to say. Is fetish, okay, which is an African thing. Background. Right. Mm. Would you say that, that that is of, so to speak, that is of the devil? Would, would, would you say that? Uh, Jones, I think we're getting, sorry to say, we're getting a bit twisted here. And uh, sometimes I, I would say I believe in herbalists. Uh, I believe in herbalists uh, because uh, uh, gone are the days that when someone is sick or someone falls sick in Africa, they use this herbal medicines to cure the person. And uh, there was nothing more like this paracetamol, this chloroquine, and even these days we have some of this medication known as the try and error. They use it to test you and stuff and that. So to me, I think, uh, uh, you know, bringing all this, this together, talking about identity, we've lost it so many times. And I think it would be good for us to go back and, you know, uh, bring all these herbal medicines and talking about fetish priests and all of that. It, it's not evil, but it, it depends on the way, how you look it from a long distance, from a distance, and you say maybe it's uh, evil or it's not good or something like that. But uh, I think it would be good for us to, you know, go back and take these things. And you also made mention of... Uh, uh, this identity stuff. To me, <laughs> I, I, I think it, it's, it's about time that uh, we need to, you know, speak to our elderly people. I, I think these days we don't even speak there's to our elderly. Are you trying to say there's a disconnect? No, there's a disconnection. There's no communication between our elders and uh, the youngsters of today. They, sometimes they say 21st century. So even when you say something, oh, we are in the 21st century, so elderly people, they've done their, they've done their bit and, you know, that their okay. time is gone. All stuff. right. All right. Let's take the next caller. Hello. Good morning. Hi, yes. Hello. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Mario. I'm actually school teacher. I'm really talking to the radio actually. Okay, Mano, what you got to say? What would you want to say? Okay, I'll be just really challenge the notion that African culture is fabric. You did make a description that I don't particularly like the way you put the words and the quote unquote um, in describing African culture as fetish. What right has anyone got to describe Africa? as a fetish or describing our own culture and tradition as fetish. Why do you ever think that I would say that is absolutely unacceptable and should never have happened in any shape or form? I think what first of all we need to understand is that people culture are their own identity and for us being Africans and by our culture we should be described as the people we are and not by calling us names. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. That's Emmanuel there. Um, he's talking about um, the fetish. Um, <laughs> well, b b before you come on, um, okay. Let me hear what you got to say, Peter, before I go and take a few messages. 
I was listening to a radio program a while ago where this uh, medical doctor had gone to Ghana and treated uh, those with mental diseases. Yeah. And then he, he, made, uh, he made another observation. He said, you give them all the med medicines and they will take it, without exception. But the Ghanaian will tell you one thing, that it's spiritual. You, you need a spiritual healing. Mm. It's, not, it's not just a Ghanaian. It's, 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 it's an African. African. Yeah, it's not yes, just uh, a Ghanaian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he was, he, he was in Ghana, so he was quoting the Ghanaian. And in the West as well. In the Western also. He says, he says, he says I didn't understand that part. I, I, it, it really bothered him. And I just sat back in my seat and I said, but you wouldn't understand. How can you understand this when you are not of us? Because for us... The human being, the definition of a human being is different from you. You know, we say the okra, the sunsun, mm. which come from the father, and then the blood and mother, which come from the mother. Mm -hmm. That's why most accounts are matrilineal, yeah. because they believe that the mother who gives the, the, yeah. the, the body form to you. But it's the spirit world. That is, for, if you're in Ghana, you say also, you're sunsumazi. It's spiritual mm. because we all have always believed in that. It's always been there. It's always been there. People say onion. Which which witchcraft? Which witchcraft? Yeah. But then onion is in, its, in its deepest meaning. It's not something evil. In fact, it was encouraged. I remember this was saying my, my witchcraft was encouraged. Was encouraged. Let me tell you, it was encouraged because it says. If there is a clan and it has not got a witch in it or witches in or wizard in it, they will die out. Because they were there to protect the clan or the family from spiritual things. Yeah. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If that's what you're saying. Yes. But, <laughs> but, but now you've got families praying against... That's what I say, but let, 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 let me tell you something. Okay. If you, if interesting. You, interesting. <laughs> If you remember A.B. Krenz's song, Oboyin yeah. Nanyan, or yeah, the yeah, yeah, Papa, yeah. Okay. And yeah, it, says, it, says, it says, the white man's uses witchcraft uses it, but the black man is for this. But originally, it was encouraged until Christianity came in. Mm. And that's when people said, no, we have to stop this. You see? So going back to its very roots, it was encouraged because it says, oh, he, he, he or she is there to Protect, protect the family the family or the clan from spiritual mm. things. So the Okonfo or Edinsifo were those people who could travel in between the spiritual world mm. and the physical world. For us, who cannot do that? So when you're talking about the fetish or whatever, it was those who were able to, to, to cross into the spiritual mm. world. To communicate. And communicate for us. For those who can't. So it was encouraged. So if you went to, let's say, uh, a herbalist, even though he's going to give you the herbal thing, he says, oh, let me invoke the gods to help yeah. out in this. Hmm. It's, 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 so uh, okay, <laughs> it's very deep. Let, let me just take a few uh, messages on, on Facebook. Um, Frederick Enyan is saying that English is not the language of Ghana nor of Africa. Oh, yes. That's an imperialistic thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kofi Ali, Kofi Ali has come back with a message on Facebook. He's saying, when you call English language a foreign language in Ghana, then the country as well as the country is as well as um, a foreign country because there was no country in place before it was formed. What were in place are the indigenous kingdoms and their, their languages. Now that um, a new supernation and language has come into existence. We just have to adapt and leave the old, the okay, okay, the the, the old one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Kofi. Um, keep your messages coming in. Again on Facebook is um, GNTV UK. You can watch the live stream and continue to leave messages. If you want to call into the studio, it's 0203 or 0203 If you want to send a text message, it's 0793 So get your messages and comments in. How, how do you strike a balance between uh, 
Okay, you wanted to say something? Yeah, okay. about Kofi's issue. Um, I, I want to find out from Kofi that for how long are we going to be the photocopier but not the original? I don't think when you go to China, like Ghana, we always compare ourselves to China and Malaysia. When you go to these countries, I don't think when you go to their parliament, they speak English. They will definitely speak their own language. And even when you go to Germany, they speak their own language. And look at how developed these countries are. So for how long are we going to imitate our own language and say that we're going to embrace someone's language? And even to learn someone's language, there's a saying that uh, before you can learn someone's dance, you need to twist your waist or something like that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I mean? So I, I think uh, Kofi is getting it wrong in a way by uh, uh, he's thinking that, okay, English is good for everyone. And I know Kofi sometimes when he speak, he understands what you're saying, but he just don't want to speak, uh, speak our local language. Uh, so to me, it's, it's about time that uh, we need to make sure that we respect our own language. Because if you don't speak your language, if you don't portray who you are as an African, even the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you address people out there, you, to me, you look a bit inferior. You don't come up as, an, as a real African. So I, I A real Kofi, African. Yeah. Okay, I'll come to you. I'll come to you mm. quickly. But let me take, let, let's read a few text messages. Um, this is from Alex. Alex is saying the Western lifestyle of, of the day... Okay, the Western lifestyle of the advanced countries have infiltrated every area of our lives. We see everything Western as good, even if it goes contrary to the good values of our African culture. Mm. Well, okay, that's from Alex. Um, I will read a few more, but just no, coming no, no, quickly. Right. Mm. Just coming quickly. Right. My, my, my boy was five years old when he came home one, 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 one evening uh, playing with his friends. And do you know what he called me by my first name? Peter. Immediately, the mom called him and he said, hey, don't ever, let me hear you call your dad by that name again. Mm. I call him Peter, you don't. You call him dad. Right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was quite surprised. And I said, oh, come down upon the boy. He doesn't know. He said, no. Because eventually, we would take... Current, current. Yes, eventually, we would take this boy to Ghana. And he's not supposed to do that in front of the elders. It's not our language to use that first name for mm. your father. So he was teaching him, but from the very beginning, that if you went to Ghana, there's a different set of language that you have to speak yeah. before your elders or before even your peers. Mm -hmm. And true to form, when we went to Ghana, he was playing with his, with listen, but one yeah. of them was his uncle. But almost the same the age. Same height. You know, and he says, don't be silly. And then my, my, my aunt said, hey, don't you know he's your uncle? Don't speak to him like that. But then, the, see, <laughs> again, the language. Yeah, okay. the language. If, if, you're from the, if you were born outside the country and you go back and use such words, it means saying, telling somebody not to be silly is not an insult. You're no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. Let me come back to the language. I think the point that Kofi was trying to make. Mm. Living in a country where there's so many languages, mm. how do you then conclude what's going to be the national language? However, if we, if we say that, or should I say the country comes to a consensus and say that English is the national language, but then, you know, nobody will feel marginalized because let's not forget of the tribalistic issues that goes on. Because you can't say, let's use, you can't say, uh, for instance, if it's Nigeria, um, Yoruba is going to be the national language or uh, the Igbo is going to be the Igbo language is going to be the national language because people will feel marginalized. I, I do get you, but here's the problem, right? Why the English language in the first place? I asked myself, no, I've asked myself this question various times. Why the English language? It was imposed on us because of our colonial past, and we had no other choice. If you went to school, that's what you used. If you if if you have this uh, listen to go to Parliament. That's what you have to use, because you have to debate in English language. But if I have to go before uh, Ogwa or, mm, or, or Mahini, mm. I don't think he would even tell me speaking English language to him, knowing very well that I'm a Fanti. A Fanti, yeah. Fanti, he would, he, he would want me to speak Fanti to him. when you speak English, they will have a translator for, for yeah, they to translate. Yeah, they to translate to, translate, to, yeah. to, you know, to, to him. So it's, it's something, like I always say, here we are. What about our mothers and fathers who have not been to school and who are still there using mm. our, 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 language, yeah. our, our, our language? What do we do? Do I go, I go to school, 
or I meet you, I speak English language. But what if I go home, I must speak my language mm. to them. So we have no other choice but to use the English language as a medium. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue the discussion. Make sure you can uh, to call in and also um, go on Facebook. We're streaming live on Facebook, okay, and leave your comments there. I'll take more of your text messages. I'll read them out when we come back from the break. This is Talk Africa on GNTV UK. We'll be right back. Redefine. Wondering what's going on in the life of your favorite entertainment personality? Wonder no more because the Daily Setbit has got you covered with the latest in entertainment news, gossip, facts, rumors, and of course, some sizzling interviews. Not just that. Did you know actor Jimmy Fox's real name is Eric Malon Bishop? I bet you did you know. On the Did You Know segment, we bring you some mind-boggling facts you might not know about your favorite celebrity. We don't only set the trend with our stories. We bring you trending videos and images that have gone viral on social media. Your entertainment just got better. Majority of you only pay attention to us after years of unremitting persistence and rejections, whilst we challenge the way it has always been done. We have made courageous decisions many of you wouldn't dare dream, forgetting you can live it when you dream it. Wake up with an idea. Research the egg out of the idea. Write a massive business plan. Raise money and create business. Wave goodbye to friends and families as your life is now your business. Stick with it, even on the bad days. Following your massive expansion into a worldwide domination, retire to your favorite highland or go back to step one and wash, rinse and repeat. The CEO's Chair, showing on GNTV UK. Welcome back to Talk Africa with me, Jones. Um, if you just joined us, we're having a very, very um, interesting um, discussion this morning. We're asking a simple question. Are we losing our identity as Africans? Uh, you can join in the discussion by calling into the studio on 0203 735 or 0203 286 If you want to send a text message, it's 0793 or go on Facebook, GNTV UK, and you can leave uh, uh, comments there. And there's some sort of discussion going on there right about now on Facebook. So do get um, in touch. Now, let, let, let me read this uh, very quickly before uh, we, we move on. I can see there's a lot of messages popping up on my <laughs> screen. Don't worry, I will get to um, your messages very, very quickly. Okay, now in the 18th century, the, there was a, a, a missionary with the name of um, um, Edwin Smith. Okay, he wrote a, a book which was called European Colonizers, um, which Col European Colonizers Used um, to Suppress Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the title of the book is The Golden Stool. And he writes, the first method begins by destroying the institutions, traditions, religion of the people, and then superimpose upon the native ruins whatever the conquering governing power considers to be the better administrative system. So then, which brings to mind what you were saying, that these type of things, like the spiritual things, were already there. Mm. So then, them coming there, destroying it, and imposing their way... Different culture. Different yeah. culture on us. But the, the, if, if you're saying we already had this, are you saying then that the, the Christianity faith is, is, is wrong, it's not good for Africans? Well, uh, uh, that's debatable. You can say yes or no. Because if you say yes, it, it, it is, it's because it's, it's able to, to erase what we, we originally believed. Mm. It, it, it has. 
Because right now, if you if you if you went to Ghana and then it says poor libation, they said no. Yeah, that's evil. That's evil. Right? But then here, let me tell you let let, let me say this. My uncle had bought uh, palm wine, and then he poured some on 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 to the ancestors, on the ancestors, and then to to the earth, mm. you know. And there was a guy that he said, "Uncle, I used to be doing this," and then he said, "Sit down, let me teach you teach something you. that you don't know." Come closer to your mic, yeah. please. He says, "God gave us this earth. That's why we call the font is called it Asasefua, mm. and as I said, say Asasefua." Because he says, the earth is like a mother to us. It feeds us, mm. it clothes us, it heals us, it does everything. And even when we pass, it takes us to his, it, to his bow. So for us, we don't worship it, but we recognize the part that he plays for us. The good values. The good values play for us. We don't worship it. We only worship Odumankuma or Chede Ampong. But here you are. This earth has been able to give you palm wine that we are drinking and mm. having a different. We should thank it and then take care of it. You say you call, you talk about environmental protection. We know that we have to protect this because the way it protects us. So we we thanking it for, for giving us that. That's not evil. That's not fetish. Mm -hmm. It says if somebody does something for you, the Ghanaian culture, the next day you do what? You go back and do what? Thank the person. And this earth has been able to provide us with this. And we're just thanking it. Mm. We are not worshipping it. We're saying, thank you. But the white man comes in and says, what we are doing is wrong. And then we all accept mm. it that it is wrong. It says, listen to how we pour salvation. What do we do first? Fidi and Pong Kwame. So the first thing we mention is God's name. And then when, when you mention God's name, then it goes, the list goes on, and you start calling. Um, no, 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 no. Then it says, second, it says, as I see ya, in son. Okay. But here it says, it says, it then. Let's translate it for us. Yeah, as I see ya, it says, Mother Earth will give you drink. And then he says, we go to our ancestors. ancestors. He says, have you ever heard the queen naming any other name as, apart from William and Charles and Charlotte? This is, because they are their ancestors' name. Right? They are their saints. We also have our nananum, who are our, our saints. Mm. He says, when we do naming ceremony, we name it after somebody who has come and done a good deed. Yeah. Never anybody who has done a bad deed. So we also have our saints we call Nananum. It says, when you go to the Catholic Church, they interject. It says, oh, St. Patrick, pray for us. Yeah. So, this is, so why can't we say our Nananum? Pray for, for us. us. Okay. Let's let's bring in Brown Eye. <laughs> <laughs> Brown Eye, you share the same views as um, Peter here. Yeah, definitely. I, I perfectly agree with what he's saying. And I'll make a quick example like myself. When I, when I was growing up... I, Hold on a minute. I introduced you as Kenneth... Uh, Johnson. Arthur, Arthur Johnson. Johnson. And now I'm saying Brown Eye. Okay, just <laughs> excuse me. This, this, is how we, this is what we call him here, Brown Eye. But Kenneth, continue for me. Yeah, uh, I, I'll make a quick example. Like, w when I was growing up as a little boy, I had this problem with my, with my hair. I never had any hair on my head. And I... Um, at that time, there was hospitals and stuff and that. But guess what? They used this plantain leaves and also palm nuts, you know, the black bit at the end of it. These are the stuff that they used to cure my hair. So that's when I started, I started getting hairs and that. So I asked myself that if I say I believe in our culture, even for me to remember those days, what they used to cure me, why would I say that I'm going to ignore my culture and where I come from and my identity? So there's no way I'm, I'm going to say that I will embrace the, uh, the Western culture. Or even though I would do certain things, I would use mobile phones, and but my mentality and the way I think, the way I do my things, I know definitely I'm coming from a place whereby that's not what I was brought up. Maybe I'm just here to learn something. But in my mentality and everything I do, I think there's no way I'm going to dash my culture into the being and... Um, 
do something different. So talking about our identity, for instance, we've lost it, and it's about time that our ancestors and our, also our parliamentarians and stuff, they need to at least try and use our language for our brothers and sisters. Like um, our uncle was saying that um, his son called him by his first name, which it shouldn't have happened like that. If but then, but, but then if, uh, let, let me ask you, I mean, we're saying as if um, our culture mm. is no more. It's still there. If you want to no, practice no, no, no. it, our surely culture, you can still practice it. No, no, it. our culture has been erased. Uh, uh, Jones, I, I remember a, a friend of mine, I, I normally use uh, this normal African cloth as my scarf. And my friend was like, oh, how, Brown, how come every time you're using this African, why don't you go to Max and Spencer? But I'm like, what are you trying to imply? I'm trying to portray my culture out there, show the uh, people out there that this is where I'm from. And uh, even sometimes the, the, the people that are not Ghanaians, when they see me wearing this, they say, oh, it looks really nice. But when you meet your own Ghanaian, they will tell you, how come you've got this cloth on your neck? How come you've got this uh, African bag and all of that? Why don't you dress as you are living in England? And I said, but how can I portray my culture to the people out there? I'm not, I'm, I'm not from the West. <laughs> uh, let, let me say something. Let, I'll be very mm -hmm. honest. Um, because um, obviously I've seen my mom and my dad, you know, very um, cultural people. Mm. Um, and even to extend my, my older brother and also my older sister um, and my younger sister as well. But with me, there's five of us, the third born and the last born. We were not that comfortable with wearing the cloth or the jumper. So uh, when my dad passed away, we went to the funeral and uh, we had to wear the cloth. So we managed to put it on and then we sat down. And it got to the uh, point where we had to get up as a family. Myself and my other brother, we both sat down because the moment we tried to get up, the cloth kept coming off and we didn't know how to <laughs> fix it. <laughs> so we sat down the whole time, just sweating to, to the point where my older brother went, look at the both of them. They're struggling with the cloth. And then essentially my uncle taught us how to put the cloth on. And that moment i think that was when i really started getting into the prints mm. wearing the prints whereas before when i was back home i used to wear it but then when i came here it kind of became a bit foreign to me yeah i can get you because you know it depends on where you're born and what or where you're domiciled whether you're domiciled in ghana or in, in the western europe and or americas or whether you were born here to the mic. yes or, or whether you were born here you know it's all had its own perspective i remember very well that i was asked to conduct uh, a marriage ceremony because uh, my friend has been in Ghana and he couldn't come back and his son was uh, was going to marry and he said oh, Peter could you do this for, for me and I had worn a white and black edinkra mm. this and as normal guess what a lady who was born here Ghanaian came to me and said unks that's why he called yeah, me unks why are you wearing white and black I thought it's for, it was for funeral. And that's where I sat her down. I said, could you excuse me? Everybody out. And I sat her down. I mm. said, look, let me tell you something. Yes, it is. The black is mourning color for, 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 for Ghanaians, or white and black for various reasons, if the person has gone on a, a little bit in age. Yeah. And we all know that. But also, the black is a symbol of maturity. People di didn't know that. Mm. They, if you watch the YouTube, you could see that uh, Mampohini was going before Dasantehini yeah. to be sworn in. All of them wore black. black. The black, is, this is not, in that sense, was not a color for mourning, but of spiritual maturity. You see? So the culture itself is, is, is deeper. Unless you get to understand and know it, it is there and there about. You ought to really experience and know the culture. Okay, um, let me take a few um, messages um, on Facebook. Um, I can see that Kofi Ali is definitely <laughs> going in back and forth, back and forth with um, Frederick uh, and Jan. The both of them are going at it on there, which is this, which is what we like to see. Um, you know, pose a question that will provoke your thoughts and. Um, you know, people can see and hear what you're trying to get across. You can call it. The number to do so is 0203-735-8820 or 0203-286-0185. If you want to text, it's 0793-286-1328.
Uh, somebody sent in a text saying, please ask Kenneth for me. Uh, is his dreadlocks African? Of course. <laughs> of course. And when we talk about uh, Rasta, for instance, each and every uh, uh, African is a Rastafarian. Uh, that's one thing. That's my belief. And uh, we don't necessarily need to carry the locks to become a Rasta, but uh, it shows your identity and where you're coming from. So to me, yeah. I would, I would add to that. People don't know that. Uh, people, people will associate these things, but we who know, you know, we know that it's called Impese. Okay, Impese. So, but what does it mean to you? What, talking about my hair? Yeah, what no, does it mean to you? No, carrying my hair, is, is, it's more like mm. uh, having my natural hair, and uh, it means a lot to me. Anytime I see my hair, I, I, I cherish my hair as my baby and my, as my everything. So to me, it, it shows my identity, it shows where I'm coming from, and uh, it, makes me who, it, show, it makes me who I am. It makes you who mm. you are. Mm. Okay, very interesting. Can I add something to it? Okay, quickly. Uh, it was explained to me in Kekus, you know, because you know of the fetish in the Ghana Fusu. Yeah. It says, those with Impese, it's, it's an outward sign that their whole life has been dedicated to the gods. And certain things, they are, they are forbidden. It's always been there. It's always been there? Yeah. Okay, all right. And I think my next guest has always been with us. Kofi Ali he wants to come into the conversation once more. Kofi, let's hear you. Yes, but we were not produced. We were not producers of clothes. So if some group of people recently have started wearing black clothes to go to funeral, how can we say it's a... Some people are doing it because they think it's nice, right? Now, with brown, uh, my brother Kenneth, brown eye, you have chosen to live in a certain way so that you protect your identity. You can't say it's our identity. It's yours. And individuals choose to do things their way, or a group choose to do things their way. That is not God's way. Our way is how we move along as undetermined. So please, let's stop confusing the culture and identity the way we are doing, because we need aeroplane things on our identity. If we are part of our culture, because we also travel. We should be talking about this. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Kofi, thank you. Uh, you, want to, you want to respond um, to uh, The only response I'll give to Kofi, where in the Bible was there barber shop or was there any saloon and that? So to me, uh, if he's saying that uh, it's not our culture, we all believe in the Bible and we all believe that we were created by one man. So um, I'm, I'm trying to portray what my ancestors left and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to continue the same thing. Okay, go on. Yeah. The question I'll pose to Kofi is this. It's, it's as simple as this. Look, we as a people, we as Africans, we as Ghanaians, as Togolese, as, as, as South Africans, as Zimbabweans, or whatever, we were a people with culture, right? With traditions before the white man came. Mm. Something, I mean, even if we were nations, as you were saying, like the Fanti Nation or the Asante Nation or whatever this thing, we were a nation with culture, political culture, social culture, all sort of cultures that we had before the white man came and imposed itself up, up, upon us. Are you saying that we have to do away with our identity? Who we are as a people? Who we were, who we are now, or what we will be in the future? No, we can't. Our point of reference for any Ghanaian is our culture. I have been to so many occasions here whether it's wedding and this thing. And guess what? Watch it. Yeah. Kelewole. Kenki. Dehu and stuff. Yes. People are trying just not to, for one day, mm. not to serve <coughs> fish and chips or, 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 or any other European mm. food, but Ghanaian food, but the Ghanaians to know that this is who we are. Okay, uh, Caleb, if, if somebody was bro uh, born here mm. and for one reason or the other, they're not able to speak the mother tongue, yeah. um, w would you classify that person as somebody who has who have lost their identity? Uh, I wouldn't say they've lost their identity, but I, I, the person I would blame is the family or the parents. The reason I ask you that yeah. question, because earlier on, Peter did say that if you lost your uh, mother tongue, mm. more or less, you've lost something huge. Mm. That's why I'm asking you that question. 
Yeah, uh, you've lost something, but to me, it's not your fault not to learn our language. It depends on the person that uh, gave it to you or your parents that will lead you to that line and say that this is your language and this is the language that you need to be speaking. But to me, I'm, I'm, I was saying that, okay, your parents will speak the language with you, but when you go out there, you speak to your friends. And sometimes I think we have a, 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 a breaking barrier when it comes to communication in African homes and stuff and that. That's why we have all these problems, uh, let's say our nephews and uh, our brothers and sisters not being able to speak our language. So to me, it's about time that we need to have classes that will show our brothers and sisters that the language is a very nice language. You know, when you speak it, it stands out, you make, it makes you who you are. And uh, it's about time that, yeah, we need to, English is nice, it's nice to speak English, but when you meet an Indian on the bus, they will never speak English with their chick kids does, on, on, on the bus. So in that case, does it make you less African if you cannot speak your language? No. Like I said before, it depends on where you domiciled, right? So if you domiciled in Ghana, by all means, you will be open to that, mm. that, that, that environment where you speak the distance. But then if you domiciled here and you, you migrated, you still can remember those mm. languages. It is only when you were born here, and that's where it becomes a problem. And my son was born here. But we made, we made, we made a conscious effort that at home, we spoke to him either in Fanti mm. or in Equapim. Because if he came and then he spoke uh, English to me, I would reply, in Fanti. Yeah. You know, and then he goes, listen, then I wouldn't, I would, I would say it again until he gets what I'm trying to. Eventually, he got it. And he started speaking to me, even though with an accent. Mm. You know, it's only when he went back to Ghana that when he came to me, you know, it, it, I'm so sorry. I just see one message from Kofi on, <laughs> on Facebook. I think maybe I might share it. He said, my brother, anyone can eat anything if they choose to. Um, does it make does it make it special? What are we doing? What what we are doing is closing the door to change. OK, <laughs> yeah. so. So it's, it is only when we went to Ghana that my, my, my son came to me and, and said, Dad, thank you very much, you know, for, 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 for this. Even though I can't speak it, I feel at home because I can, I can get my message across to them mm. somehow. And they laugh at me, but I'm learning. I really want to learn. And for the three weeks we stayed there, he made sure he learned a lot before mm. we came back. Because he realized, he says, Dad, if part of me is Ghanaian, then if I go home, I must be able to communicate with yeah. them in that environment. I can't speak the English because I become an outcast. Even. Okay, final words for uh, you. Jones, uh, uh, last one about what Kofi just said. How nice would it be, let's say, Christmas time, everyone is tucking into this techie stuff and that, mm -hmm. and you inviting your Western friend to come to your house and, you know, serving them with maybe tilapia yeah. or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's about selling your culture to the people out there, Let, letting them know that this is what you eat. Yeah, and, and, and quickly to, uh, to add, there was this, I told you about this white man who, who met me in Brixton, actually, yeah. when well, that was a Ghanaian. Yeah. The first question he asked, he says, do you know how to prepare granola soup? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, unfortunately, this is where we pause and say goodbye to our guest um, in the studio with us today. Thank you very much, Peter, for coming in. Uh, thank you very much, Kenneth. And also, a big thank you to Ludwig for joining us, everyone, in the program. We will stop here, like, but let the conversation continue on our social media platforms. I'm sure at some point we will come back to this topic again. It's very huge. We'll come back to it. Make sure to join us tomorrow. Tomorrow is a big one we're discussing. Okay, tomorrow, are we losing the battle against corruption? We'll discuss that tomorrow. Make sure you tune in. From me, from my studio guests, from everybody here at GNTV on Talk Africa, thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. This program is brought to you by Pay Global.